Gets is the singles, and that should really be exciting with uh, Nicola Gadeen and Wayne Odesnik. Odesnik, yeah. there you go. Okay. I, yeah. Gadeen from Italy and Odesnik from the United States. This is actually going to be a, a fun, entertaining match, I think, because, uh, I mean, I know Odesnik's game a little bit. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I've, I've seen him uh, play a little bit, but I don't know Gadeen's uh, that well, but I've heard uh, he's a player. R I, mean, I, 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 I heard he's a ball player, and, and, and that's obvious by the by virtue of the fact that he's here in the final today, right, but right. Um, it, it'll, it should be a fun, entertaining match, especially these two guys on clay. And before we go any further, let's thank the sponsors that helped to make this possible. The White House, of course, uh, being one of them, the uh, Native, as well as the uh, Observer, the News Journal, Beach Radio, and WNZF. Those are the major sponsors for this event. And you know, being the first of its type here in Palm Coast, it's good to see that the uh, these companies have come out to support tennis in Palm Coast. Even the mayor and the, uh, the head of Flagler County is here. Everybody's here to enjoy it. And the crowd is enjoying it, too. No, they, well, especially with the doubles. I mean, the doubles kind of set the tone, I think, for today. I mean, it's a, a, an exciting doubles, a lot going on. And I think there are a lot of people in the crowd saying, now that's how doubles is supposed to be exactly. played. But the thing <laughs> is, is they're going to go back to their res uh, respective clubs tomorrow, yeah. and that's not going to be the doubles they're going to be seeing. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to look like that. <laughs> but but uh, so it's great for them to come out to this pro circuit event, uh, this USGA pro circuit event, and, and get a taste of what yeah. uh, you know, doubles is supposed to be played like, and the, and the amazing thing about it is, is you know, this is you know, I, I like to call this sometimes this is the minor leagues of tennis. You know, this is every every young player they come through these futures events, but this isn't where they ultimately want to be. Exactly. So when you get on the on the WTA or excuse me, the ATP World Tour, right. I mean, the level of doubles being played is at another level up from what we're seeing today. But what I noticed is. And, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, is that some of these players today, both in doubles and coming up in singles, have played in some of the ATP They, they have. They, they have. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, I'll use that baseball an analogy again. It's kind of like that, that um, AAA player who gets called up for a couple of games, but he right. doesn't stay there because right. he gets called up maybe because someone's injured. Mm -hmm. and But he's not quite good enough to get there to the majors and stay to the majors. And so some of these players, you know, they might get a wild card into a bigger event or qualify into a bigger event, but their ranking doesn't allow them to play week after week after week in those events. So they'll they'll play futures events. They'll play challengers events to get their ranking up, gain points to increase their ranking. But ultimately, they want to move their way through these futures Futures events into the uh, ATP World Tour. Interesting. You know what? I'm going to see if I can get the mayor to come over and sit with us for a hot second before the, before the game starts. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, come yeah. on in. Why, thank you. How are you today? Oh, I'm wonderful. It's a great day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, how does it feel to, to have your first professional tennis tournament here in Palm Coast? You know, it's, it's marvelous. It's like a homecoming for me because when we came here in the, the early 90s, we, of course, had a lot of pro tennis here. And we've just, we've brought back something that was part of our heritage as a city and as a community, and it's just wonderful. Well, you've already given some news I wasn't aware of. There was pro tennis before? Oh, yeah. The, the old tennis center, um, uh, Gullickson and, and his ilk, and it was, it was a wonderful thing, but it was, a, it was original creation of ITT. They put it here. I mean, they knew what would attract people to, to their development, and tennis was one of the things, tennis and boating. Right. Um, so they've done some wonderful things. You know, the, the, we're just coming home again. We had a golf course, the original golf course went down, and then we've been able to bring it back. Right. We've been able to put back, you know, quality tennis into our environment. So uh, 
for me, it feels like the good old days. And I have a very important question for you. What level of tennis do you play? How is your tennis? See, I wasn't asking that question. See, see, you're better than me. I, I wouldn't answer that question. What you heard was what they call a pregnant pause. Let's put it this way. I, I'm an excellent spectator. Uh, there, there you go. Well, let's be, being a spectator, what, what does an event like this bring to your city? Well, it, it, it brings back our, our focus on, on quality of life. Uh, you know, whether you play tennis or whether you uh, play golf or whether you swim or whether you boat, uh, life is all about enjoying yourself, and, and whether you play tennis, or whether you watch tennis, this is just a. We're gonna, we're gonna. I'm sorry, man. I mean to cut you off. We're gonna really start in about two seconds. We're just giving us the high sign. Okay. But I just want to thank you so much for coming. You even brought the sunshine. It's coming out a little bit now, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what? You look around. There's not a bit of snow on the ground. There you go. <laughs> and that's that's why we live in Florida, <laughs> gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you. Thanks thank for you, being man. here. Enjoy the match. Well, that was good to have the mayor out here enjoying some time. I, I, I just felt like, see, I'm one of those guys, I'll put people on the spot a little bit. So I, I had to ask him about his tennis. I didn't I didn't know if he was just a fan of the sport and just liked to watch or if he was actually a, a player. But I figured I'd throw it out there. I'm glad you did that because that was an unfair question. <laughs> He's a politician. Is there such thing as an unfair question? I guess not. I, okay. I, I, I take that back. But but he but he did say it, it, he did have that long pregnant pause. He can't uh -huh. you can't do that on the campaign trail too often. I don't think I mean, you have to you have to be th able to think off the top of your head pretty quickly. Okay. But it's fun to have him out here. Here we go. I know there's a leg. I guess they have a little pause here. Yeah, but Wayne O'Desnick, uh -huh. American. He will start out serving. Yes, he is. And watch how he can sling that serve. Just, just wide. He had the. He actually set the point up pretty nicely. Had the shot he wanted to have. It's amazing how many times they overplay what, what they could get away with with a, with a lesser uh, shot in terms of closer to the to the line. Something I just noticed, Mal, it looks like he really backs off that second serve. I mean, he, he slows it down at least in a 5, 10, 15 miles an hour. You know, and, and some of that is going to be... Uh, is going to be dictated about what he thinks his opponent is going to do. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't think his opponent is going to try to attack his second serve, well, maybe there's no real reason to try to hit a big second serve. Mm -hmm. So that's the case with some players. And then there are other players who just, they take a lot of pace off of their second serve. That's, that's the pace that they feel comfortable with. Oh, wow. Okay, a little bit of the nerves, you think? Could be uh, nerves. Uh, three points into the match, and he's had two errors already. The opening point with the forehand and that double fault. Yeah, and he went for that another big forehand, and and literally, I mean, it's, he's missing two shots in this opening game by by about an inch. Mm -hmm. Thirty. 
recording. So another break point here for Gadeen mm -hmm. to get up an early break. But right now, a lot of times in the first couple of games of the match, you're especially if you haven't played someone. I mean, you're you're really feeling them out. You're trying to see what they're going to be doing. You're trying to get your rhythm. That's a good shot. try something different and it yeah but but well you know even there you know we we see a little bit of what each player is going to try to do i mean in that game we saw desmond hitting a lot of forehands so mm -hmm. i suspect throughout the course of this match you know what that's what he's going to be trying to do mm -hmm. he's trying to hit a lot of forehands cross court to gadeen's backhand but one of the you know one of the things i already see that could pose a problem for gadeen is watch how far behind the baseline he stands. I mean, when he was hitting those backhands, those three or four backhands in a row in that last point, I mean, he was a good eight, nine feet behind the baseline. Now, certainly that's his game. He's not a serving volleyer. He's not a guy who's going to try to come into the net and, and play that attacking type style. But when you're that far behind the baseline, that's a defensive position. Would you, if you, if you were playing him and he was playing that far back, would you, would you, uh, put in a few drop shots? First thing I I would be looking to do is if he's playing further back, then I'm going to move in. Mm -hmm. The further back he is, the further in I want to play towards the baseline. And certainly incorporating uh, little short shot, short angle shots and drop shots will be part of a part of the game plan. Mm -hmm. But certainly more of an attacking style. That's big, that's big power on that forehand from Gadeen. And where was he when he hit that, that forehand? He was right on top of the baseline. He wasn't, he wasn't eight, be, eight feet behind. You can't hit a winner from eight feet behind the baseline. But you got a shotgun and a bullet coming out of it. <laughs> but if, he, if he's able to be opportunistic and when he sees Odesnik on the run and then he's able to step up, then he can produce those winners. Oh, wow. Nice down the line shot. Nice down the line shot. But it, and we're getting some good pictures here. I basically want to tell you about the uh, top sponsor, of course, which is uh, Bright House. Uh, this tournament here at Palm Beach, Palm Coast Tennis Center. That's big. Oh, that was brutal. That's that a, was brutal. That is a big backhand yeah. from Odesnik. You know, and it's it's funny because when you're when we're sitting here on the sidelines, I can I can kind of see it. I can see how a player constructs a point and why they win the point. He won that point because he stepped up into closer into the baseline and took that ball early. <laughs> Is that a case of the case might be fast enough to put it away easier? 
Well, from where I'm sitting, it looks like it, that that pace is pretty fast. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, bo both of them are hitting a big ball. But interesting that, uh, and you don't see this often, two breaks of serve to start out a men's match. And, uh, you know, so a good job there from Odesnik to actually get the break of serve back. But there's going to be, throughout this entire match, there's going to be that opportunity for Odesnik to break serve often because Gadeen is not going to hit a lot of aces, a lot of service winners. He just, that's just not the that's serving not style he has. He's not a big guy, and he's not going to hit a lot of those shots. So my point being, Odesnik is going to have a lot of looks at the second serves, or or even at the first ser first serves of Gadeen. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like right now, um, Odesnik has a little bit more power. Certainly has more, uh, more power on his first serve than Gadeen. But, but it looks to me that the Gadeen is more, more of a counter puncher. Even though we saw him hit a big forehand winner in the previous game, he's more of a counter puncher. He's going to stay a good six, seven feet behind the baseline, and he's you know, just running down a lot of balls. And if he has to come in or if he's forced to come in, he will. That was a pretty easy, easy uh, uh, game for Odesnik. He, he, he seemed two like he's he got his number already. Well, well from, from our standpoint, sitting here on the sideline, yes, that was an easy game. <laughs> I guarantee you from his standpoint, I don't think he'd say anything about that game was easy. But, yes, it looked easy from over here. You know, but I'm, I'm, we're sitting here in jackets exactly. and, we're, and we're not sweating. But you see, but you see, you know, just like all of us couch potatoes who, who not you, but, but those of us who sit and watch sports and say, well, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? You look at him and say, well, okay, this guy seems to be more powerful than the other guy. Right. So. You know, it's kind of funny because I've never lost a single match from the sidelines. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've ever lost a point from the sidelines because I know exactly what should be going on. Uh -huh. But whether or not you can actually do it. Because b both of, look at this match here. Both of these guys, they know each other's games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they've, 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 yeah. If they haven't played each other, they've seen each other, they know what they're going to do. That's what their coaches are for. Yeah. Yeah. So they know what they want to do. Now, whether or not they can implement their game plan successfully that's a completely different story and that's the that's the trick in tennis is okay i have my game plan can i get to my opponent's weakness yeah. before they get to mine can you see it imagine it and then then actually perform it and make it happen with the knowledge that my opponent is trying to do the exact same thing exactly they're trying to see it imagine it and implement it mm -hmm. well, here we go I was counting that time, and I think I got to about 15, 16. Right. We're, we're going to have a lot of that in this in this singles final. Makes for great uh, 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 spectator viewing. And it makes for uh, a lot of shot making. I mean, I, and I, you know, I'm looking at some of the ball kids out here doing the match and some of the ball kids outside. I, I love when the kids are out here watching mm -hmm. the tennis. Exactly. Because I think there's a, you know, there's a great learning opportunity when you can just w sit there and watch a guy hit forehand after forehand and see what he does. Boy, this is, this is, wow. This, this is like mano a mano, right? You know, just, just You know, but from from my standpoint, I wanna, I really wanna watch a Desnick's game and to figure out, you know, here's a guy who at one point was 77 in the world, mm 
Mm-hmm. And when you're 77 in the world, you don't play futures events. Right. Exactly. You're not playing the USDA, so you're on the ATP World Tour. Okay, so what's the difference, you know, and back in 19 or 2009 when he was 77, you know, and today where he's playing futures events? Did he, did he, maybe there was an injury or something like that? You know, I, I, I think, well, I mean, every guy out there at some point is, is dinged up a little bit, mm-hmm. whether it's mm-hmm. a little tendonitis or a knee or, or an ankle or something like that. But, um, you know, I think he's, you know, certainly he's, he's trying to work his way back to that level of tennis. Well, let me ask you this. You're out there as a pro. You you know. Do you ever have or see your other players that you play with just 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 go into a funk? Just good shot, good shot. Just go into that thing where where you don't you, you just lose it. Uh, you know, I think it's you 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 look at a tennis player or you look at an athlete and you feel like well this is the money they're making or they're doing what they love to do you know they should be able to go out every single day and give it 110 percent well the reality of it is every day you go out on the tennis court i guarantee you physically you're not feeling 100 percent right I mean, exactly. you, you have a you know your back's tight you you have a little tendonitis somewhere um, you have personal things going on in your life just like every other individual but you have to somehow try to Focus wow. and produce great tennis. Yeah, and that, and like they, just like that shot just now, like that last forehand, and that's and that's not easy to do. Um, it is. It's so competitive out on out on the tennis tour um, at this level, and in, you know even at lower levels and higher levels, it's so competitive because every week someone is yeah. one person is going to go undefeated every week. Yep. Everyone else yeah. is going to lose yeah. that week. But can you walk away and try to learn a little something uh, about yourself, about your game, to improve it? Does it look like the tide is changing already in this set to you? Well, f- certainly from the from the first game of the match where uh, Gadeen lost the or won the opening game, mm-hmm. breaking Odesnik serve, mm-hmm. and he's now Odesnik has rolled off three games in a row and has game points for four one, and now it's four one. Yeah, Desnick looked like he's he's found himself, got his power, and is Odesnik is uh, four games to one, first set. Really moving forward. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Melissa sometime between now and the end of the match, or right after the match, that we get a chance to talk to her too. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be right back. Well, this is a good chance to talk about our sponsors again. Let me see, make sure I, I've got it right here today. We've got uh, one of our lead sponsors, of course, is Bright House, and, and we also have uh, WNZF and Beach Radio, the News Journal, The Observer, and Native, all sponsors of this wonderful event. Tennis is back in Palm Coast, and here we go. Hitting that ball. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. But he, I think there's no question as to who's got the power here. Yeah, well, Desnick showed the power in that point. He had complete control of right, the point. Right, right. Did everything he needed to do except finish the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the high, the high forehand volley, and that's just one that, that – it was literally a routine forehand volley, and we all miss him at times. But Exactly. Exactly. And I guess at, at leading 4-1, uh, 
you, you can try uh, he, he can he can afford to miss that one at that moment My question is, you're down 4-1. You know the other guy is stronger than you. Where do you go? Well, you stick to your game plan. Uh, and you try to clean up your game a little bit. You're not gonna, you're not gonna abandon what you know how to do. You know, that was an you know, in, instance there, he can't throw in little double faults like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. when you're already down a break of serve. But tennis is a sport where it, it can it can literally turn on a dime. Mm -hmm. And it's a and it's a sport of confidence. One guy throws in a double fault and then you know, the backhand side of, of Gadeen, which is usually pretty consistent, you know, he misses a backhand there, and all of a sudden it's 30 all. Right. You know, and he's two points from going down 5 1. So uh, things can change so quickly in tennis. He just said it's the right shot. Just, just didn't execute it properly. You know, and, and that's. That's what most most tennis mm -hmm. mistakes are about. The shots that the players hit, they've they've literally hit them hit ten thousand forehands like that before. They know what they want to do, and nine times out of ten, they're gonna make the right selection of shot. Mm -hmm. But can you pull it off? Exactly. That's the question. Exactly. Good shot. Now that's that's really using everything you got in your in your arsenal. He really did, and it was he used it really as an element of surprise. He had control of the point, Gadeen did. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? Throws in a nice little drop shot yeah. and follows it up with a nice smooth backhand winner down the line. Yeah, no question. Not an easy shot to I mean anyone can hit a drop shot, but can you hit a good drop shot and win the point? Oh, that was a late call. Wow. Definitely a late call. That was a late call. And the, you know, and then, you know, in, in here at, at this event, you know, you're relying on the, you know, the players to make some of these calls. Right. You know, the, uh, Odesnik is the one who uh, actually stopped the point mm -hmm. to show that chair umpire where the mark was. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. You're talking about patience. This is this is truly a. a, a, a you know, it's like David and Goliath, and and and. You're just saying, okay, if I can get it across, you got to get it back. You know, it's a clay, especially. I think it's a thinking man's game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you know, you have to use the angles and use the the surface, the clay surface against your opponent, and play behind them some. 
using different, we saw their drop shot from Gadeen earlier. It's got to feel good, too, being able to pull, pull off something like that. You were talking about clay. Now, I noticed, and I I'd asked the question earlier about the substance of, of, of the course. It seems to be somewhere between clay mm -hmm. and and hardcore. Well, well, you know, they, they'll call this, uh, you know, like a hard true court. Right. Um, hard court is, is obviously a, you know, an, an asphalt type surface where mm -hmm. you're, you're not sliding on right, it. Right, right. Um, this is... You, the, the red clay that you see at Roland Garros, you can obviously slide on it, and that's more, I, I describe it as more powdery. Right. right. Whereas yeah. this clay, you can slide on it, and it's more grainy. Right. Um, the clay is, is, in general, going to be a slower surface mm -hmm. than, uh, than a hard court, though you can even, depending on how you make the hard court, you can actually change the pace of the hard court itself. Wow, there you go. That, that, he, put, he put everything he had behind that one. You know, but what I, what I always find amazing is, is you look at these two guys right here and you, you look at their level of tennis and you know, anyone watching this tennis, they'll say, man, these guys are hitting the, you know, hitting the heck out of the ball. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're just ripping the ball. You know? right. These are two of the best in the world. But, you know, that's, this is such a... There's so many levels of, of tennis above where they're playing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the great thing about tennis. There's so many great players out there. And, and you, you know, people often ask me, okay, what's the difference between these two players? Right. And, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of players ranked in the top 50 or the top 100. And a lot of times it just comes down to, to a level of confidence, mm -hmm. uh, confidence mm -hmm. in their own ability. Mm -hmm. We don't have a tennis gun on them, but where would you say they are in, 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 in speed, in terms of serves? Um, I, I would say Odesnik is certainly in that, um, the teens, um, one teens, 115, 120 range, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, great shot. Desnick definitely has a lot of power going for him and a lot of speed. You okay? <coughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> such a long break. I thought it was every six. No, you change every every odd game. Right, okay. Every, uh, so we have one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. At the end of the set, will there be much of a break? Uh, yeah. Okay. There'll be a break like that one right there. Okay.
Yeah. Love wow. Him. No, that's a that's a big backhand, and Gadeen is taking a long look at it, but he's already applauded Odesnikov right, and shown exactly. him that it was a that was a world class shot. But that that's the kind of tennis that I think Odesnik consistently has the the opportunity or the ability the ability to, to produce. Mm -hmm. But I think for Odesnik. You know, he's been as high as 77 in the world. He's just, just outside the top uh, 110 in the world right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I think events like this have the opportunity to really help him. And fine-tune. Fine-tune, but grow his confidence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but at, at 25 years old, you know, Adesnik, you know, he wants to continue to move his ranking up. Yeah, he wants he's to. He's got to move now. You know, but Gadeen, he's just a couple of years, two or three years younger. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit earlier in his career. You know, but for, you know, for for Gideon, I, I sit here and say, okay, you know, he's you know, 20. I think he's 22 years old. Right. You know, he, he's early in his career, whereas Odesnik, just three years later, three years older, you know, he's in the middle of his career. I mean, this is this is where he needs to be playing. He's in the prime of his career at 25 years old. What would you say Gideon needs to do to get to that next level now, from where he is? Serve, without question. He needs more uh, power on his serve. You cannot and will not, and I'll make my point after this point is over. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, in men's professional tennis, you cannot and will not make a living playing tennis if you cannot get free points on your serve. And that's kind got of it. what we've got seen. It, yeah. so, and when I say yeah. free points, you got to be able to produce some aces, 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 service winners, and a big enough serve where you get some easy second balls. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to do that. Yeah. Out. Game on first set. Okay. Let me grab her real quick. Okay. Six games to two. I got to tell you, we have the most important lady in the county here with us right now. I feel is, is that true? You're the most important person, lady in the county? <laughs> Renny exaggerates. No, I no, don't. Uh, I appreciate that. Melissa Hollins, uh, Flagler County, yes. Tourist Development. Uh, this is going to do a great deal for tourism here in Flagler County, don't you think? It is. Uh, when we were first um, approached with this event on the council, uh, we were all very excited, not only about the um, uh, exposure we would get, uh, not only from a regional perspective, from uh, much more than that. And we, can, we, we look for tournaments like this to be brought to our community. Yeah. Well, I want you to know you're sitting next to a man who played in the finals of Wimbledon. And uh, we're talking about the level and the quality of the tennis here. And Mel, what do you think? Well, I, I think the quality is good. And I'm going to ask um, of, of Melissa the same question I asked of the mayor. How is your tennis? Um, well, I did play high school uh, nice. tennis. Uh -huh. um, my daughter. That was, so that was just a couple years ago. <laughs> well, thank you. But actually, my daughter plays JV um, for uh, her high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are involved with tennis here. Um, it, there's long history in Palm Coast right. uh, that we've uh, come to love and respect. So I'm going to stick on that because you kind of went around the question. <laughs> I want to know specifically how your tennis is. Do you still play today at all? I know your daughter plays. Do you, the two of you get out on the court um, at all? We do. And um, I, I played in the um, 
first celebrity tournament here against Tom Gullickson. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, I've known Tom for many years. And um, needless to say, uh, Tom is a far better tennis player than I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he was respectful of the fact that I don't play as often as I would like. <laughs> no, Tom, uh, Tom is a good friend of a lot of people. He's a good yeah. friend of mine, and he was actually my Davis Cup captain oh, wow. uh, going back in the 90s. And he was my Olympic captain. Uh, captain in 1996 in the Atlanta Olympics. So, wow. so, so Tom, uh, Tom's been in the world of tennis for decades and decades as a player and as a coach. Absolutely. He's a wonderful coach. Um, he's he's another um, asset that we try to promote here in Palm Coast. Mm -hmm. um, he obviously loves his community and uh, was an integral part of actually forming and bringing this tennis center here mm -hmm. in Palm Coast. Okay, from your from your perspective as a uh, as a fan of tennis, mm -hmm. so Desnick yes. wins the first mm -hmm. set. I mean, what do you what do you see going on out here in this match? Wow, um, <laughs> come on, now. a don't, lot don't of be energy. Shy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it seems to me that uh, they're both here for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, two very competitive players uh, that. Um, are taking this very seriously, a high level of concentration, right. tremendous amount of strength. It's exciting to watch. Sounds like the kind of stuff you'd probably tell your daughter. Absolutely. So you, you've, you've had that, you've said that before, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. I know. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. Certainly no, appreciate it. Thank you, and um, it's a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the match. Okay. I know I will. Okay. Good luck. Thank, thank you. For everything you do. Thank you. Well, we got one tennis player out of two. I think so too. I think so too. I think we need to get him out, get some lessons, and get him going, and get a feel for for how it works. And now an opportunity here for Gadeen. Exactly. I was just thinking the same thing while we were away with. Uh, uh, Flagler County, uh, uh, Gadeen sort of start to come back. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is his first break point since the opening game of the yep. match. Yep. Gonna work that back in, and I think he needs to work his way in. Yeah, you know he yeah. He, yeah. he won that yeah. point. I, I always feel that uh, when you have so much firepower like Odesnik does on that forehand side, when you have control of the point, pick pick and choose your yeah. time to come yeah. in. Yeah, you know, pick one of those balls out of the air and just finish the point in mm -hmm. the point. Mm-hmm. You know, but one of the things we were talking about uh, right before, or just right before the end of the first set was, what is it about Gadeen's game that he needs to improve? Mm -hmm. I had mentioned the serve, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I, I think he's very good at, uh, at scrambling and counter punching and running down a lot of balls. But I think one of the things that he's going to need to do is, is continue to move his way into mm -hmm. uh, the court. Yeah not finding himself eight feet behind the court too often because that's a defensive position. Exactly, exactly. He's got to be on the attack more. You know, and, he, I, and I, I agree he he can implement more, more of an attacking style, but with the knowledge that at 22 years old, that's not his game. And mm -hmm. he's never going to be this, you know, purely attacking player, but he can pick and choose when he wants to do that. And you can't do that from eight feet behind the baseline. No, no. If you're, no. if you see your opponent stretched out, that's when you you look to attack. And I haven't really seen that from him. I haven't seen him look to attack and get into the net at all. And, I mean, it's clay court, and you're you know it's more conducive to longer points and being mm -hmm. more patient. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I still haven't seen him attack a lot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
You know, it's funny. This 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 court, yeah, these courts are in such great shape, and there, there's a young man here who's responsible for making sure it stays that way. And on the next break, I want to try and get Ken to come over and uh, talk to us about the 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 maintenance of this you know because you you hear in, in south florida with all the sun and 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 the, and the and when it rains it rains and you think okay well how do you keep this place up i mean how do you make it work right and i mean that that's certainly not uh that's certainly not an easy task i mean a lot of public facilities have a lot of hard courts and you know it's just a matter of just keeping them clean but in clay court completely different animal yeah each each court has it's kind of its own personality if you will some train faster than others and and they all have unique things about them you got the, the big problem in in this area is is algae mm -hmm. the stuff kind of comes through the water and then it gets under the lines and it spreads so there's a lot of a lot of maintenance that's done in the non-playing areas mm -hmm. the playing areas kind of take care of themselves because they're all roughed up but it's the perimeter areas that can be a problem but uh, you know I've able to put together a great staff and we uh, take a lot of pride in having the facility of the year we got from the USTA this year so oh, congratulations. well congratulations so, there you. you go yeah so we're uh, we're real proud of that and Try to keep it uh, at the top of the, the top of its game. You know, how old is this facility, and what what is this facility done for the city of Palm Coast? Well, it's a great question. We opened in November of '07, which you were here to help mm -hmm. kick us off that event, and uh, really for the for the community, it's been great. We've had a large tennis community here. That um, really, when Palm Coast started, golf and tennis were the two things that brought mm -hmm. people here. Mm -hmm. And then tennis kind of faded away f from Palm Coast, and so this really cut to bring those people back into action and bring people back to the area who obviously left to find other places to play. So we're really fortunate to, you know, to bring those players back and then gain some new ones. Mm -hmm. You know, the interest is catching on again. The junior programs are growing, adult programs are growing, our cardio tennis program is strong. So. You know, tennis is kind of working its way back into the main light again. How does this professional event work into the grander, the bigger scheme of things of what you're trying to do here with tennis at the facility, but throughout Palm Coast? It uh, it definitely gives us some a great uh, way of marketing and advertising, and it brings you know people from all over the world in. So it kind of helps open the door that anyone can play. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be from a certain place or know any person you can you can be from anywhere and, and enjoy the game let me ask you a fan or spectator question if a person wants to find out more about playing tennis here what number what website do they go to we have a brand new website uh, uh, palmcoasttenniscenter.com okay and it has all of our programs it even has the live draws of this tournament on it so okay. you can you can find out absolutely everything going on here as well as the public parks we're out opening perfect. new programs there as well perfect perfect okay all right ken ken thank you my, my pleasure my all right pleasure. we're going to go back you. to the game this is awesome yeah. this is okay. this is this is pa mano a mano Power versus finesse, would you say? Uh, I've seen a lot of power. You, you, you've seen a little bit of power from both guys. Right. A little bit of finesse from, right. from Gadeen when he's implemented the mm -hmm. drop shot on a couple of occasions that right. has been successful. Right. Still waiting to see someone serve and volley a little bit, maybe sneak in. Right, right, right. But, you know, that's really not their game, but I, I love to see... Even if it's not your game, I love to see players getting out of their comfort zone yeah. and, and exploring other parts of the court. They they both seem to be comfortable from playing, but from behind the lines. Uh, uh. I mean, I think kind of what we've seen throughout the match and. Dean is getting a little frustrated over mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having missed that shot. You know, missed it pretty badly. But I think what we've seen is that the game that Gadeen has is, is pretty much a baseline game. Right. He, he's just right. going to rip off both sides of forehand and backhand. But. Can you that, win being a baseline player, though? he's not because that exact game that he likes to play it's not working right because there's another guy who does it just a little bit better than him and that's Wayne Odesnik 
Yep. And so one, one or two things has, has got to happen. Well, does Kadeem start playing a little bit better, or does Desnick start missing a little bit to open up the door for Kadeem? You know, how is he going to turn the tide? And that's what I'm interested to see. And playing better means doing what? I, I think for him, uh, we've seen him you know, throw in a couple of double falls. Uh, we've seen him uh, in the middle of rally. I think what two points ago, maybe three points ago, right? Uh -huh. The first point of this game, missed uh -huh. that, uh, that ball badly in the middle of the net. He's exactly. To clean up his game a little bit, trying to cut down on some of the, the easy errors. You're going to have errors, right? Some of them forced by your opponent. Whoa! Oh, he had him on the gun run, Dan. He—that's that, one of those examples where you got to be able to. I don't think he was expecting that kind of reply. Exactly. Desnick. Desnick was way deep behind the baseline, outside of the doubles alley, on the ad side of the court. He relaxed. He just it, kinda, it, it was almost like a squash yeah, shot yeah, that he came yeah. by, barely got over the net, and it surprised him a little bit. Uh huh. It's almost, it's almost like Odesnik just wears him down. It, you know, like, okay, hit, give me your best shots, I can give you mine back. And his bed, Odesnik's best shot is just flat out better than Gadeen. And stronger. And, and that, that's yeah. what we've seen. He yeah. has, here's what it comes down to, uh, which is why Odesnik is leading a set in three love. He, he has more power uh -huh. from the baseline, and he is beating Gadeen at his own game. Yeah, and that's what's frustrating yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're out there. When you feel like, okay, I'm playing my game. The other, my opponent is kind of playing the same game that I have, mm -hmm. but they're doing it better than me. Yeah, you know, and that's why. I mean, I mean, sometimes I, I think back to some of the matches that I played in my career, and there was no question. Every time I walked out of the court, I knew what I wanted to do. Right, right, now, whether right. Whether or not I could do it against Andre Agassi. <laughs> That was yeah. the difference. On yeah. two of the four occasions I played him, I was able to do it. Um, and I beat him. On the other four, I couldn't do it. You know, and more often than not against Pete Sampras, I knew what I wanted to do. Did, I do <laughs> Did you ever beat Pete? Um, and it doesn't really count because I beat him in a, it was kind of a meaningless exhibition. Uh -huh. But when you're 0-6 against the guy. Listen, there's you'll, no you'll, such thing as, you, as a, a, a win that's not important. Uh, well, it didn't give me any, it didn't give me any <laughs> ranking points, which kind of stunk. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, but that was one of those, those times where uh, he knew what I was going to do. Uh -huh. I knew what he was going to do. Right. And he could just do it better. Yeah. And yeah. that yeah. that's not fun out on the tennis court to be in that position. But you did beat Agassi. Yeah, but yeah. but Gadeen is kind of in that position. Yeah. He knows what he wants to do and he's not able to do it successfully. See now he's come forward. He came, he came forward on that one. Yeah. And he's had that opportunity to come forward earlier in the match, um, and choose and chose not to. Right. That one he chose to come in. And it worked. You know, maybe I mean is that is that just an adjustment he's made on that on that changeover? He's thinking, okay, well, maybe I have to try to take a little more risks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Monster forehand yeah, right there. Yeah, he and he just every now and then he just unloads it. That's a great asset to have, a forehand at that level. No question. Oh, the sun's breaking through. Yeah. Haven't seen a ton of that this week, have we? <laughs> yeah, but it's better than being in New York or Chicago. 
That's why we live in Florida, isn't it? It dug all right. No question. Oh, oh, oh. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Great drop shot. Great drop shot. See, that's something we haven't seen from Desnick at all. Mm -hmm. He could actually employ that also. Yep. We've seen it from Gadeen. I think right. that's the third, third time we've seen that. Right. Same play because as far back as Gadeen plays in the court, Odesnik has the opportunity yep. to hit that shot. What? Hasn't really needed to, but it's there for him if he chooses to. Exactly. Wow. Wow. That, it, 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 it keeps coming back. Who's got the power? Yeah, and that's an example of a guy's confidence who's continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. We weren't seeing that level of forehand, I don't think, throughout the first set. Right. But now he's up a set. He's up 3-0. He's right. getting more confident. He's being taking more chances with that forehand. There he goes. In, came in again. Came in. Oh, wow. Another forehand winner. Look wow. at that. Wow. <laughs> I see some of the, after that forehand, I see some of the people in the stands just shaking their heads like, how yeah. in the world do you pick up that ball six inches off the ground, produce that much power, exactly. and exactly. still keep it in the court? And loads of top speed. That's a that's a that's a good point from from both players, but I'm going to tell you why I hate a point like that. Why? Um, Odesnik had his opponent on the run. Yeah. Had every opportunity. It was a backhand. Yeah. Every opportunity to come into the net and try to put that point away. But what uh -huh. does he do? He hits the backhand, backs up, and in essence, what you're doing, you're just starting the point over. Yeah. Yeah. When you have the opportunity, yeah. you have put it to away. end the point. Yeah. You got to put it away. No question. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between, you know, those those great players out there. Mm -hmm. They know how to end the point. They don't just start the point over again and hope their opponent is going to miss. But don't you think, too, it's a mindset? It's, it's a mindset that says, I'm in control mm -hmm. or I can be in control. It's certainly a mind. And you love to have that mindset when you're in control. Yeah. Um, but when you're in control, make your way in and put that ball away. Mm -hmm. and, and you still keep control. Exactly. Exactly. See, that is yeah, a, as an example of how you... You're controlling the point. Right. You see your opponent is stretched out. You move in and put and, away an easy ball. Yeah. Now, yeah. if he hadn't moved in, that ball would have landed pretty deep into the court, exactly. and it would have been like exactly. starting the point over again. Exactly. All right, let exactly. me see if I can work the point to try to gain yeah. control again. Yeah. Once you have control, don't relinquish it. Mm -hmm. See, he heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good get. Oh, my good at yeah. And see, in, in essence, that's what Odesnik did there. Mm -hmm. He saw his guy was on the run. And he moved in. And he moved in and took right. the ball out of the air. Right. He, exactly. he has the ability, especially with his forehand, right. the way he can control points with his forehand. He has the ability to do that more often yeah. if he chooses yeah. to. 
but but some of that that may be okay who's in your ear in practice mm-hmm. you know who are you listening to what are they what kind of things are they telling you are right. they telling you you need to be doing that or are they not telling you that yeah yeah good point good point good point good point sure that the operation runs smoothly mm-hmm. this is the guy that's this is the guy right here yeah this, this is the guy this, this is tom choffey who who uh, oversees both golf and tennis for the city of palm coast mm-hmm. and uh you got to be proud very very much so we, we entered into a uh, an expanded agreement with the city back in october and uh, we've been managing the palm harbor golf course for the city for about 18 months now, and uh, they invited us to uh, help out with the tennis center. And you know, this is quite a tribute. This is a, the field is so strong this year, right, right from the start. So it's a, it's a wonderful tribute to the to the city, and to, I think the players last year realized that this is a great little venue and it's a great tournament, and it's also a great tribute to Ken and Lena for the work that they've done mm-hmm. to put this together. So I'm very happy to be a part of that. So we've got some nice plans for growth. We're looking to expand the game in the area with Ken and Elena at the helm. And uh, you know, Kemper Sports is, is proud to be a part of that. This is a great city. It's founded on golf and tennis and water sports, as the other mm-hmm. fine gentlemen have, have talked about. And uh, uh, it's got a wonderful history, you know, with the golf course and Nancy Lopez played out of Palm Harbor for years and Tom Gullickson brought in great tennis mm-hmm. to this area back in a few years ago so it's exciting to see that opportunity come back and it's got a wonderful facility here. And Gullickson was uh, Mal's coach uh, oh. for the Olympics and for, uh, and for Davis Cup. For Davis Cup. Yeah. Mal back in the day did you play at the ten- at the players club here did you come to the players club? Uh, I, I did not. I did not have that opportunity, but I, uh, I lived a little bit further north, mm-hmm. up in uh, up in Ponte Vedra, so mm-hmm. it was an easy drive down today for me. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh! Nasty. Great execution oh, from nasty. the Nasty. What a shot! But I, I think one of the reasons why I enjoy uh, the USGA Pro Circuit being here is, you know, so many times people think of men's professional tennis and they, you know, they think of those big names, but they don't realize that this level of tournament is where all of those big names came from. Mm-hmm. You know, because at some point, every great player, including Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer, they had no ranking. Yeah, exactly. They had to start somewhere. So they start on the satellites, the futures, the challengers. So the players that people see this week, this is who they're going to be seeing Tomorrow in the future stars. for years yeah. and years. Tomorrow Absolutely. stars. You can see the depth of the sport mm-hmm. when you come out to the grassroots events like this. You know, right from the very first match 10 days ago in the wild card, it was mm-hmm. impressive. I was yeah. very impressed. Yeah. We have we have some wonderful junior players here from the area. And uh, you know, that's that's what we're that's what we're really interested in in promoting here is 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 tennis and golf mm-hmm. and other sports, but but working with our youth in the area to build stronger teams in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So well, it seems like more, yeah. I was going to say it seems like you guys are doing a, a good job. Wish you all the success with it in the world. Thanks. And someday we'll keep up with those Jacksonville players. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Take Pleasure. care. Oh. Okay. Well, listen. It it things have uh, 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 heating up here. It looks like. We, we, we may not end as quickly as it looked like it was going to be mm-hmm. a few minutes ago. You know, and I think we had talked about it some of the first set, how the tide can change in, yeah. in tennis very, very quickly. Exactly. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced it's going to change and completely put uh, Gadeen in control of this match. Right. But, you know, that drop shot, as we saw just a few punts, points ago, works well for him. 
you know, it almost seems like he's challenging uh, um, him to 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 hit his best shot. It, 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 it's, it's, it's like cat and mouse almost. It, it is cat and mouse. And in that last point, Odesnik was the cat. Exactly. <laughs> and Gadeen was the mouse because exactly. he was just running around. Yeah. He was just running around chasing yeah. that ball down. Yeah. But he saved a break point. Odesnik did. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, let's see. Four, four, one. Yep. It's uh, something's got to happen here. Yeah, and it almost happened in that last game. Yeah. We hadn't seen uh, Gadeen break serve since the first game of the match. Mm -hmm. But he had a break point there, and he wasn't able to convert. It was just a great point by Odesnik. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and once again, I, I want to thank Bright House and uh, Beach Radio, WNZF, and the News Journal, The Observer, and Native for making this all possible for our audience to see. Oh, Mal, does this bring back uh, any kind of desire for you to... Uh... Desire to what? <laughs> no, no, seriously, desire to do what? To get out and play again. Oh, I, st I still play. Uh -huh. I still hit the ball. I enjoy hitting the ball with my kids or uh -huh. just going out for fun. Uh -huh. Does it strike a, a, a spark in me to go out and be competitive? Uh -huh. Absolutely not. No, oh, okay, 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 okay. No. No, no, no. no, no. Mean, my, you, my competitive days are uh, are over. I enjoy going out and just hitting balls to to try to get a glimpse or a memory of what I used to be able to do because I can't do it anymore well, like see, I used to. You get guys like Evander Holyfield coming back at 50 years old and, and, and getting in the ring. I mean, well, we shouldn't have that happen, <laughs> even though it does happen. <laughs> Okay. But, but, but the great thing about tennis uh, that I like is that uh, even though I'm not competitive anymore, or competing mm -hmm. on the tour at all, mm -hmm. I can still go out and hit balls and enjoy the heck yeah. out of it. I mean, yeah. I love yeah. just going out, you know, even if it's for 45 minutes, just mm -hmm. hitting ball, hitting a few balls, running around, getting a sweat, mm -hmm. and um, just having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. But I'll leave the competition to, to these guys, the guys who, who are out there and they're still trying to, trying to make a living out there, still trying to fight their way to the top. Uh, Looks like he just had a little misstep there just now. And, and Interesting. He's talking to himself now. I, I think we've reached, reached a, uh, a, a the, the point where you, you say, you know what? I've met a better player. If you're, you know, he, he hasn't gotten to, because I don't think he's going to give up. He's not going to roll over. But if you're Desnick, you look across the net and you see him talking to himself a yeah. little bit and you, you know you're in his head and you just have to keep the pressure on, yep, keep exactly. your thumb right there. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh! Between the legs. Ah! Oh, I, I, I thought I was going to see a Federer shot. Nobody called it. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I'm not sure what the exchange was between yeah, the chair umpire and... Yeah. 
I, actually, I think mm-hmm. Desnick was joking a little bit. He said, because I, I think his foot touched the net, uh-huh. and he didn't hear the cheer umpire say anything. Yeah, exactly. And I think he said, well, before I run next time, next time tell me if I touched the net. I could have yeah. saved a sprint. Uh-huh. So he was just having a little fun there. Go out? <laughs> nope, right on the line. Oh, wow. Right on the line. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And I don't think Odesnik was trying to cut it that close. No. But you could hear it. It hit right on the line. It's the first time we've seen him do that today, I believe. A little, yeah. A little drop shot. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's been all power until now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's to Gadeen off. He said, you know, you're beating me with power. Now you're beating me with my game. Yeah. Yeah. Gadeen looking, looking to the chair umpire on one of the, one of the lines calls that he, that was, there was not a call. Mm-hmm. And Gadeen thinking it maybe was out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you're, I mean, in this situation, if you think the ball is out, you have to stop immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And go to that mark and get that chair umpire to, come down and take a look at it but that's not what he did he continued to play exactly but break point for Odesnik Okay, well, this this is. Um, but I, I think what I think what you were going to say is that this is a mauling right now. Yes, it is. Um, but but it, it's interesting to watch it because, as we've pointed out, the two players have similar ideas about what they want to do. They want to mm-hmm. stay on the baseline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Odesnik is just playing. Uh, you know, his has perfect execution. He's just hitting a bigger ball, and he knows if, because he hits a bigger ball, if he can stay consistent and not just throw in right. unnecessary errors, he's going to win most of the points. Well, it's it's like uh, 100 miles an hour to the baseline versus 50 miles an hour to the baseline, and it, it at some point, you know, uh, not going to work. Big. Yeah, that yeah. is big right there. Big, big, yeah. Definitely. He hasn't slowed down since he no. started. And just like that, he has a couple of match points on yep. his racket. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's that, it. Yeah, and that's it. And the the one time he's serving volleys, he does it on match point, and that goes to our our point we've been talking about. I think he has the ability to do that yeah. more often. More often, not Absolutely. just on match point. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question of his talent and ability. It's just a matter of uh, you think he was just holding back and and just using trying to. You, you know what? It's it's just not his game. Right. That's not that's not what he's used to. Uh huh. But I think it's something that. If he forces himself, he can incorporate that into his game. Right. And it just makes him more versatile, makes him a more complete player, and makes him a better player. Yeah, no question. It's that simple. That's, no, the, that's I mean, the way that, I look at it. That was perfect tennis to me just then. Right. Just that, that one point, he just he just did it all. Yep. Well, Mel, I think it, you know, uh, it's time for you to get out there and, yep. and, and greet the winner and uh, congratulate them. And from the Palm Coast Tennis Center, this has been uh, a pleasure. It's, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's the first time we've been behind the microphone together, and I hope uh, it's not the last time. Thank you know, you. I was, was thinking the same thing. Yeah, this was we ought to, Yeah, we ought to do this again. Who knows? Maybe here next year. Well, maybe even before that, because I figure if I could be around you enough times... And you touched Wimbledon. Maybe my <laughs> tennis game can improve just a little bit. Okay, how are you going to help my tennis game, though? That's the bigger question. Well, see, you've already had your fame and fortune. Uh, okay, I, well, you okay. know, I want to get the old man fame and fortune. Well, gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out there. Okay, let's go. In what, what if I speak English in with an Italian accent? In English, just a little bit, <laughs> like that. No, no, but no, uh, Nicola. First, congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, give him a, give him a big round of applause. So t tell tell me about your tell me about your game. Tell me about your tennis. How do you feel like you played this week, and, and where are you in your your tennis game right now? Or did I did I say that too fast? But I am uh, really happy to be here today. Um, has been a fantastic uh, week for me. This uh, this is the first final for me, and today win. Uh, is uh, too good for me. Hey, this is his first final. Give him a round of applause for that. <laughs> this is your first final. Yeah. In 2011, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I hope... Uh, you want to continue winning? Yes. I hope uh, to do well uh, also next month. Uh, um, Maybe 600 is a good ranking for me. Right. Hey, do you think you can get to 600 in the world? Yeah. All right. Hey, good luck the rest of this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Well, Wayne, uh, c congratulations. Uh, a good week for you, a solid match today. Tell me about your tennis right now and how you feel about your game. Well, I mean, first things first, I just want to congratulate Nicola. Had a very good tournament. And second of all, to all the, the fans that came out this week, you know, it's only my second tournament back, and to have the, the support of everyone here means the world to me, and it makes the comeback that much easier. So I want to thank everybody. You know, you you were away from the tour for for a little bit. How how does it feel to be back out on the court doing what you love to do? Well, you know, I I think obviously to to play in my first final, it's been a while, and uh, you know, it's always great to first time I've come through qualifying and won a tournament. So, you know, it's a stepping stone to where I need to to get to. But uh, you know, hopefully, I'll I'll take the confidence and everything and 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 keep going from here. You're going to keep going, but where is it that you need to get to? What are your goals for 2011 and beyond? Well, obviously, uh, my goals are to get back uh, into the top 100, into the big tournaments. Um, you know, I feel that I'm playing better than, you know, I've worked, I've had time to actually work on things, work on my game. So I feel physically, you know, I've had a 
very good uh, time away from the game to heal. But, you know, most importantly, you know, even coming out here today, feeling, you know, the nervousness and everything, I feel just the time, the difficult times that I've been through, I look at things a lot differently now. You know, just being out here and uh, a beautiful day, being able to do what I love, you know, those things are, are in difficult moments is what I appreciate now. And I think that's what's going to help me succeed in the future. Well, you've been in the top 100 in the past. I hope you get back there again. You guys want to see him in the top 100 where he belongs? <laughs> Wayne, congratulations again. Good luck the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thanks. Wayne Odesnik, everybody.